it's not you, it's me. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and uplifting life partner. Now, this particular conversation now, I don't know if you've ever said this to someone or had someone say that to you that it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Whether you have or not, I know you've heard people that have used that phrase or had that phrase used on them. So what I want to do is kind of clarify the three reasons why that statement is actually used. And for some of you, you're going to be shocked to find out the reason is actually used. In most instances. The first reason that people use that is their objective is to soften the blow of breaking up in a relationship. So they'll say, it's not you. It's me. I'm going through changes. I've, I've had some things going on in my life. And they'll do all this softening because they're trying not to hurt you. Now, whether people believe it or not, that one is used sometimes. You notice I said sometimes because it is very rare, again, very rare that that is the real reason that people actually use that statement. Even though most will try to convince you that is the major reason people use it, it's not. It is the rare reason. Some people use it, the second, is because they actually feel they're not worthy, that good things don't happen to them. Their self-esteem is very, very low. So when they get in a relationship with someone who they've identified as this person that they pretty much have almost put on a pedestal, they believe that they're maybe the stumbling block to this person being happy uh, because they don't deserve to be happy. So they want to kind of almost bow out and uh, let this person find someone that they feel would be better suited. Again, that's a low self-esteem to believe that there's anyone. And you guys have heard me say that before. There should never be anyone that you look at that you say, I'm not worthy of them. Now, whether you guys connect, as some people say, from a spiritual or uh, emotional or whatever you want to call it, that's one thing if you guys don't attract but never, ever believe there's anyone that is superior to you. See, unfortunately, in our society, we, we make people believe because they have outside exterior things that they're better. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, but anyway, moving on. We won't get onto that subject. I've talked about that before also. Check out my other videos. But the third reason and the reason that most people actually use this and the crazy part is most of them don't even know this is the real reason that they're using it. And it's because they really are. It really is them. They are the problem. When they say it's not you, it's me, they're accurate. But they don't even realize it. A lot of them think they're actually softening the first one we talked about. That they're actually softening the blow when the reality they really are the issue. Why? Back to kind of what we're talking about in number two. They haven't done the work. They haven't gone out and, and, and spent the time to find out their value and their worth. Figure out where they're headed in their life. What do they actually want? What are the red flags? What are the things that I'm not willing to put up with? What do I really look for and, and, and do I fit? We've talked about creating a list when people talk about making a list. Have I done that? And do I qualify for the list that I created? See, because if I've done all the work, think about it. I won't position myself to be in a relationship where this will become a topic, where those words will ever need to be said. Why? Because the more equipped you are and know where you're headed, you will know, you will pick up on people, and I say this all the time, People will talk about how it takes so long to get to know people. No, it doesn't. The time it takes is in getting to know you and learning what it is that you want and not being, I saw someone's license plate today. It was talking about be unique. 
I disagree with that statement because you are you are unique. We were all born unique. You've heard me use that before. I said, we're all born unique. Unfortunately, most die as copies. That's the whole objective. So it's not a be unique, stay unique. Because you're already there. It's just unfortunately we allow the world to program us. And that's kind of along with, with, with this topic here. Um, which I'll cover in terms of um, one of the comments I heard a gentleman talking about today. He's uh, one of the top uh, relationship guys and single guy, but he's still at the top. I mean, one of the major players. And what he talked about was he said, when people say you have to accept people as they are, he said it's a bad statement. And it's, it's crazy to even think that would be true because he was saying, think about it. If you're a person that nags, nags, nags all the time and always been negative, he said, if you do it every now and then, that's one thing. But if you do it all the time, what I, I, I have to, I have to put up with that. I have to accept that. Yes, you do. That's the stuff I teach because I believe that to be true. Yes, you do. You accept people just as they are. Here's why I say that. There's a difference between accepting and agreeing. You guys have heard me say that. You have to accept people as they are. You have no choice. This is their life. This is their journey. You do not get to change people. It's not your job. The only person you get to change is the person you look at in the mirror every day. Understand when a person is trying to change you, they're telling you, I don't like you. So I want to create you to be the person I want you to be. That's not your job. So yes, you accept people as they are. That example that he's using of the person who's always nagging. If you've done the work that I'm talking about, which is you got clear on what you're looking for and where you're headed. If that's not the person you want, you wouldn't be in a relationship with them. You guys follow me? Accepting and agreeing are different. I accept that you're a nagger. But because I don't agree with it and I don't want it in my life, I'm not going to get in a relationship with you. Does that make sense? That's why for me, that's why I said you have to take, spend the time, get clear on what you want, what you're looking for. And relationships, getting into relationships, it doesn't take that long in terms of figuring out are you headed in the same direction. Now, I'm not saying um, don't give people a chance because people change. They do. They change because life happens. Circumstances, you know, things come up in your in your life and, and your perspectives that you had yesterday, they get changed today. Uh, yesterday, you were eating all the junk foods and went to the doctor and they said, if you don't cut this out, this is where you're headed and you're going to end up, you got diabetes or you got whatever illness they come up with. And if you don't cut back on this stuff, this is what's going to happen. And all of a sudden you go, boom, you stop. See, because your perspective changed. So that's not, so when I'm saying accepting people, don't take, don't misinterpret. I'm not saying that when you're in a relationship, you just go, okay, I have to accept it. So whatever you want to do, you do. No, that's not what I'm saying. It, it, there's you're going to you could go to extremes on everything what i'm saying the red flags the things that are no go you accept that about people because the fact is it's their red flags you just get to decide on if you want to be in a relationship with people that have red flags i personally say no run but in terms of are you guys going to see eye to eye? Because kind of what we were saying with the person is, that's always nagging. Obviously, that's a red flag for you. So you wouldn't get into that relationship. But what I'm saying in terms of people changing because life happens, you're always going, and especially if you've done the work and you understand you're accepting people as they are, then you're going to get in a relationship with people that aren't going to see eye to eye with you. That's not what you're looking for. But what you are looking for is someone that you can communicate with. You guys remember that. We talked about that before. You're getting in a relationship where it's safe. 
And by safe, I mean it's someone that I know I can open up to, I can talk to, I can share my intimate stuff with. If you just someone you get ready to have this great relationship with. That means that's a person who's going to hear where you're coming from. They may not even agree, but they hear where you're coming from. And they'll make adjustments. Why? Because they care about you. And it's not a thing of, um, uh, what's the word that people love to do? Sacrifice. You know, people always saying, because in relationships, you got to sacrifice. I don't believe you should ever be sacrificing in relationships. I just don't. Because to, and, and, and again, I guess we need to clarify, what is your definition of sacrificing? Because for me, sacrifice means win-lose. Someone wins, someone loses. That should never be occurring in your relationship. Never. Never. We, may, we have to come to an understanding. And that's why I said there's never going to be uh, um, sacrificing. I've used this example before where I said, um, you know, Terry loved to shop. And I didn't. But she wanted, to go sh she wanted me to go with her. So in order for me not to make it a sacrifice, I had to figure out how can I make this a win-win because I know she wants me to go. So how do I make myself? And I love talking to people. I love laughing and watching what people do. People are very entertaining to me. I can sit back and watch people, people watch and, and just laugh all day. So I'm like, what's happening to that? Why is she shopping? People, I can get to what. So I made it something that I can win because here's why I'm saying the difference. You got to understand the difference. If it's a sacrifice, then the whole time that she's shopping, I'm going to be like, man, are we through yet? Are we ready to go? We've been at this for at least a half an hour. We've been at this for an hour. but Now it's miserable for her. She can't even enjoy shopping. Why? Because for me, it's a sacrifice, which means it's going to be miserable for you. And I shouldn't have to act like I'm enjoying it because now we got a fake relationship. You guys follow what it does. It becomes a true compromising and it becomes how do I rewrite the story where it's a win win. And in that particular example, I said, how can I rewrite this so that she gets what she wants? And I can do what I want. And we're both excited. You guys follow? That's what relationships are about. I may not. Now, there are certain things. And folks, don't get me wrong. There are certain things that you're going to come across that you really, really just don't want to. Like, your partner may be into opera, for example. And you really just don't. Now, you can sit there and try to figure out a way to make it work. And, and just kind of like I said, where you say, I'm going to go there and, and, and look at the different tones, how high their voices go, how low, or watch their wardrobes, or, you know, whatever. You can figure out something if you want to. At the same time, if you have a partner, and again, that's why I said it's a safe place, and we're working, they're not going to ask you to do that. You guys follow? There's just things that if you really, truly are against, your partner's not going to push that on you. So it's not a sacrifice because they're not going to put you in that environment. If they know it's something you really, truly don't want to do, and the same thing with them. If you know it's something they really, truly just don't want to do, why would I push them on them? If it's not affecting your beliefs, your values, everything else, we can work out. Just tell her, take one of her girlfriends to go watch the uh, the opera if you're not into it. Now, I know you guys have heard me say men and women can be friends. <laughs> and, and, I, and I still believe that. But I'm not going at the same time. For me personally, I'm not going to let a man date my wife. You guys follow? There's a difference. Like I used the example. When Terry used to work, some of the guys, they, she would go to lunch with them. Cool. That's lunch. They at work. Okay. No problem. I'm not going to listen to the conversation of me and John are going out to dinner. What you going out with dinner for John? That's why you got a husband. If you want to go out to dinner, I go out to dinner with you. You guys follow? And that's just for me. Now there's, there's relationships where people don't have a problem with that. And I'm not saying good, bad, right, or wrong. Just know who you are. That's why I said, be true. Know thyself. That's what you need to do. But anyway, back to 
our conversation here. It's not, it's not you. It's me. And then we're talking about the second part of that. And the reason I was on this subject about him um, saying, uh, what, what, what was I just talking about? Where he was basically talking about, oh, accepting people, you, just, you have to accept people as they are. Because if you really get to that point where you understand that I accept people as they are, and this is how this ties into the whole topic of what we're talking about, is because that's how we get to that conversation. Is because if you don't accept people as they are, then eventually you get to that point where you go, I had enough. I'm done. And then we get to that conversation where it's not you. It's me as either a bailout or you try not to break someone's heart or whatever the case may be. But you guys follow. So that conversation, that's why I touched on that is because that leads. If you don't get to the understanding where there's a difference between accepting and agreeing and I accept you as you are, if we don't get to that, eventually we will get to the conversation of this is how we're, how do we break up? And that is one of the, the, the statements that is used most frequently by people in the process of trying to break off a relationship. So I just wanted to cover that topic. Again, be, be careful of the people that you're listening to. That's why I wanted to share this guy. And again, I'm not not because there's a lot of things that this gentleman shares that I'm in total agreement with. Um, but this particular statement, when, when, when people are saying not accepting people as they are, you have to. It's the same thing. Um, again, I, I, I shared this before. A gentleman was like, what you're telling me, there's people that's out here that's abusing uh, women and, and out here abusing kids and I have to accept that. I said, you ain't have to accept nothing, but it ain't going to stop them from doing it. They're going to still continue to do it whether you accept it or not. Accepting, again, doesn't mean agree. What you're telling me, and he was trying, he wanted to argue the point. I said, no, what you're saying is you don't agree with what's going on. Here's the difference. You're not accepting is why you're upset. You're not accepting is why you're frustrated. And you're mad at me because I'm not in agreement with you. Because you think that I'm saying you should accept the fact that they do this. That's not, I'm saying accept the fact that it is done. People do that. Yes, you have to accept it's real. I didn't say agree with it. And when you distinguish the difference, because accepting sets me free to say, this is real. It does happen. Because I don't agree with it. Now, how do we resolve it? What steps can we use to prevent it? You guys follow me? Because when he's not in acceptance, he was instantly angry, frustrated, mad. You're, the, you're not going to come up with the best solutions in that state of mind. That's why I'm saying accept it. It's real. It happens whether we agree with it or not. Now that we've come to accept the fact that it's real, what can we do to address the thing that we don't agree with? So, but anyway, get in your relationships. Uh, spend the time, get to, get to, uh, what, was, what was I get to? I was really talking about this second subject that we we're on where he's saying, uh, accept the people as they are. Um, have the safe place. And that's really what I was getting to. Have the safe place where your partner can open up and talk to you, share with you. And again, I've shared this before, ladies. Don't tell your partner that that's what you're looking for. You're looking for an open relationship. You're looking for a guy that's going to share everything with you. And then the moment he does, you call him weak. Because um, I was, oh, what was that I was watching? It was, um, um, was it, oh, the, the round, the red table, red table talk uh, with uh, Jada Pickett, you know, um, her and her mom and her daughter. And they had a, the, the rapper comment on there and he was basically talking about how he had to go get help. Um, and here's a guy that, you know, has the image of the real man as everybody talks about, but you could tell as he was telling his story, if you haven't saw that episode, watch it. You could see that he was ready to choke up a few times as they were talking. Why? Cause he's a human being. And we gotta get, we gotta quit telling guys the myth 
that you're macho and you can withstand. Because on that show, she had the, the football player, the guy, same thing, who, who tried to commit suicide. Why? Because same thing, he played football and he's supposed to be a macho man. And the world has convinced him that, men, we can handle everything. And it almost cost him his life. And there's many men who have died, who have committed suicide because of this exact same subject listening to this garbage that the world continues to give. People will tell you that the men that go get help are weak. I believe just the opposite. When you're brave enough to allow the tears to flow, when you're brave enough to know that you need help and you go hit, get help, that's real strength. Because you know it's not what the world expects. It's not what acceptable to the world. Or we should say, and for most people, it's not even acceptable, but it's not in agreement with people also. But you do it anyway. Why? Because I'm not caring about what the world thinks. I'm doing what's best for me to live the life that's going to get me to the journey that I say I want. Because, folks, the world will mess you up. And that's the whole thing of everything that I keep sharing on Self Love Monday and here in relationship. Folks, this is about taking control of your life. Doing what's best for you and your journey. And quit letting the world dictate it for you. Because they don't know. Evidenced by all the challenges we keep having in relationships. The challenges of just like on that show where, you know, she had people in there that were, were wanted to commit suicide. All because they're letting the world program them. Folks, quit doing that. So as you guys know, and I know I got off on a different tangent there, but that was just something that, that all of a sudden hit and it was on my heart and it's something that I felt I needed to share. We, we got to get strong. And, and, and guys, and I'm talking to the men here, don't let the world make you think, believe that you're weak. If you need help, go get it. And tell them they can take a flying leap if they don't like it. Um, this is about, and I'm, and I'm telling you that from the heart. Because folks, as I've said before, if tears want to come in a situation I'm in, they'll flow. You can call me whatever the heck you want to. And I want to get that message across to the men too. If you do it, that's why I laugh when I see guys at, 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 um, at funerals when they got on the sunglasses inside the church trying to be macho. That's not macho. To me, I look at it just the opposite. I'm like, you're letting the world dictate for you how you should, how you should react. Take off the glasses and tell the world, this is me. Take me as I am. They don't like it. That's their problem. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on um, Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you next Monday. For those on Relationship Thursday, we'll talk to you again on next Thursday. Uh, please send me again some of the topics you want to talk about and... Um, and run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Um, you'll see all the different things that I have going on. And, and definitely let me know the things that I've said, how it's affected you, how it hasn't affected you, <laughs> how uh, things you agree with, things you don't agree with, things you wish I'd talk on. I mean, all of, all of it's value because, I, like I've said before, no one has all the answers. I'm sharing my perspectives. And they ain't right or wrong. They're my opinions. So again, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. And remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.